It's not about perfection. It's not about how much weight is lifted or how many miles can be ran. It isn't about the wins or losses or even the competition. At the end of the day, it's about you. How you feel about yourself. It's about making progress. It's about pushing yourself and learning just how far you can take it. It's about setting goals and demolishing them. It's about seeing the limits and knowing you are limitless. It's about never giving up and never giving in. Do you have what it takes? 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 Now it's a party. Welcome to Gear TV. That's right, the inaugural episode of Gear TV Online. I am Jeff, the producer, and I'm sitting here with my co host, Joe Pietaro, editor in chief of Fitness RX for Men Online. Dot com. <laughs> Dot com. Yeah. How's it going, Jeff? Good, good, good. You know, uh, this is our first episode and we're, uh, you know, trying to put this thing together. And uh, we have a couple of interesting segments that I don't want to give away yet. But let's like talk about you, first of all, because I know you I've, I've known you for years from like the industry, mm -hmm. just reading like all the stuff that you've done. Talk about your job at Fitness RX for Men and being the editor uh, in chief of the online website. I handle all the online stuff, which basically is the website itself all the social media pages. I'm also the lead writer for the uh, Fitness RX for Men print magazine. I'm also a contributing editor for Muscular Development magazine and a columnist for that. And I also co-host a weekly radio show, Extreme Radio, with Greg Valentino from MD. With Greg Valentino, the guy who has like the, the tissue in his uh, pants, right? Whenever the Yankees lose, <laughs> right? He goes, he goes Big to Yankee fan. Big right, Yankee good. fan. Yeah. Now, now, also, in addition to that, you've also, uh, in, in the past, worked for Flex. Yes. And you, and you did some writing there as well and some... Uh, yes, with Flex and Muscle and Fitness. Yes. Right, right. And, and uh, you know, we have a guest coming up, uh, IFBB Pro Juan Diesel Morel, of course, a gear athlete. And uh, you've, you've worked with him as well. Yes. Let's, like, talk about Juan for a second because, you know, the one thing that we're going to bring up with Juan once he's here is the 20,000 calorie video that just came out and you and I were talking about it off the air and uh what's your opinion of this video it's sick I mean <laughs> I I since I've known Juan for a few years when we both worked uh, at Weeder I know that he has this crazy big cheat day but to actually you know to hear him talk about it and stuff is one thing but in this video you see it and it's just it's it, you have to check it out and yeah. it's unbelievable how he's able his metabolism is incredible yeah yeah it's you know, you know it's actually a mutant metabolism you know we're talking ice cream in the morning oreos and, and, and yeah. again this is breakfast ice cream oreos a topping of chocolate that's meal number one meal number two he has eggs of course which is everyone's normal breakfast yeah but he has a much higher amount you know than anyone else then he goes and he trains doesn't vomit at that point now I'm describing, you know, the video to people in my gym whenever I'm training. I said, you got to check out this video. It's 20,000 calories. You know, it's, it's fully documented. When I describe the first meal, it's the same reaction. I'm ready to vomit. Yeah. Now, when you were watching the video, what, were you, what, was, what was going through your head? Because, you know, you actually see him eating it sped up. Yeah, yeah. What was, what was like your, you know, your thought process when like actually seeing it happen? I'm looking at this video and I'm saying, I can't believe that this guy is ripped and shredded practically year round. Obviously contest time, he comes in tighter, but he's never out of condition. Yeah. He always has his abs and you're looking at him eating ice cream and five guys burgers with a bag full of greasy fries. And it's like, he can get away with it. God bless him, that's great, that's his body. I know I can't do that. I don't know about you, but no. I know I can't do that. <laughs> Give me a bag of greasy fries. I'm probably done for, for the weekend, even yeah. seeing the gym. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. you know, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, even though I was aware that Juan ate like this. Sure, sure, sure. And like, of course, you know, there's even one point where he shows his abs. There's no, there's no spillover. You know, normally, Nothing. you know, normally like a bodybuilder, you know, eats like a, you know, a high, high greasy food or like a lot of carbs, especially when they're in that kind of condition, you know, you start to do what's called spilling over and, you know, sure. you just start to get a little water. You bloat. Yeah, you this get guy's it. not bloated. He's shredded. He's showing it off. Mm -hmm. I mean, have, have you ever seen, you know, like a guy who even remotely comes close to Juan in terms of eating that much? I mean, you might have. Is, is there anyone else that comes to mind that kind of reminds you of what Juan is capable of doing with that 20,000 calorie cheat day? Not to that extent, but I know like the old school bodybuilders like Arnold, he used to get like two pounds of big hamburger meat at right. the Germans, they used to call it, which was around the corner from the original Gold's Gym yeah. in, in Venice. Two, two pounds used to eat. Two pounds of 
hamburger meat yeah. he wouldn't eat the buns it was just the meat right he would eat and this is something that he said in interviews and i've read yeah. over the years so i guess something like that where these old school bodybuilders would just eat a dozen eggs yeah because they really nutrition obviously was nowhere near it is now as sure. far as breakdowns and carbs and fats and yeah. proteins so these guys just kind of ate you know they drank whole milk right. so i i would probably compare it to that yeah, but these old school guys were eating. Sure. Here's, here's what's interesting is that, you know, even though that that's 100% true, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about in the 70s that they were eating all this like terrible food and, you know, they're eating like hamburger meat and, you know, again, without the buns, you know, they're having dairy products. Juan is eating for his cheat day. Okay, let's like clarify. He's <laughs> having dairy. I mean, he's having ice cream. It's not fake. It's not no health food crap. Yeah. I mean, this is not no soy ice cream. There's no offense to people out there who have the soy stuff. But, you know, this is real Briar's ice cream or, you know, uh, you know whatever ice cream brand that he buys mm -hmm. with Oreo cookies and all this other stuff. Like, th there has to be something to, if you want to be big and muscular, to overeating, okay, while including a certain amount of protein. How yeah. do you feel about that philosophy about like, you know, eating whatever is like in front of you and then simultaneously training in order to put on muscle? Do you think that that works for everyone? Do you no. think there's a select few? Why does it work for Juan? You know, it works for Juan because it works for Juan. Everybody mm. has a different metabolism, has a different body. I could eat certain things and get away with it. Like I'll have a cheat day. Sure. I'm not. What do you eat on your cheat day? I like pizza. All right. Yeah. How many? Do you eat like a whole pie? Or I can do you bang like down a pie if oh, I want, really? but I usually go for three or four. I try okay. to, you know, I try to keep it uh, three or four slices. Reasonable. Oh yeah, right. without you even see, thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, but Juan's eating a whole pie in the video. A whole this, pie. This. Two pies at Pizza Hut. Right. Not right. even real right. pizza. That right. greasy right. stuff. But 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 like he pregames <laughs> it with some wings. You know, I mean, he's he's there. He's eating the wings first, <laughs> and then he goes for the pizza. This is yeah. after eating all this crap like beforehand and training on top of that. So, I mean. uh you know, I guess that the genetics come into play not only in terms of the physicality as to how the person looks, but also mm -hmm. in terms of what they're able to assimilate food-wise. Yeah. Um, I've never seen a person who can do it and actually put their money where their mouth is or, you know, fork where their mouth is, whatever, <laughs> and actually document it on video the way that he did. So I think that that's something that, like, a lot of people are going to be interested in watching. And if you haven't seen it, I mean, get out from under the rock. It's uh, YouTube.com yeah. slash Gear Nutra. And you know what? Just go to YouTube and type in 20,000 calories. I think he actually ate more than 20,000 calories, believe it or not. If you, you know, if you count all the calories, I think yeah, it probably comes that out. That was a way rough over. estimation. <laughs> yeah, really rough. <laughs> so, you know, uh, also speaking about Juan, uh, this year he's actually going to go into the, you know, to his first ever Mr. Olympia competition. Mm -hmm. Okay, not only is this a special, you know, occasion for Juan Morel, who finally gets to step on the big stage, but there's a special occasion for the Mr. Olympia. It's the 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's the first time since the 80s that NBC Sports is actually going to be covering it. Yes. Now, I mean, talk about how like big that this Olympia competition is going to be, not just for Juan, but for everyone involved. When you talk about the golden you know, 50th anniversary of any big sporting event, it's always something really special. So obviously, you know, for bodybuilding fans, to, to, to be able to reach that milestone is something incredible. And when you see where we have a guy like Phil Heath, who's the defending champion three in a row, he can make it four in a row this year. You have, uh, you know, the, a great lineup, a sure. very top-heavy lineup. Yeah, you got Kai Green, you got Kai, Dennis Wolf Dennis, coming in, who's a favorite now. Sean so. Roden, Sean let's Roden. not forget about Sean Roden. Absolutely, yeah. Let's not forget about Diesel. I mean, to me, Diesel is the type of guy where he can definitely make a top six. It's going to be hard to break that top three, sure. unless one of those guys comes in totally off. Right. But to be a top six guy for him, I think it's, it's very plausible and it's probable at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a great Olympia because it's got so many big names in it. Obviously, we're not going to have Jay this year in it. But we have so many other names that it's actually that you're not going to really notice that one name missing because there's so many great bodybuilders competing. Right. And like it's also an interesting time for bodybuilding in general because of the movie that came out, um, mm -hmm. the name of which escapes me right now. Help Ge me out. Generation I. There we go. Generation I. You see, this is why you have a co-host. So I'm being in part two, I guess, that they tried to. <laughs> part three. Three with the women. That's yes. right. <laughs> see? Come on. You should know this. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Generation Iron comes out and like, you know, it starts to give a little bit of an insight into how, you know, the modern day bodybuilder trains. Yeah. And like it definitely harkens back to, you know, to, to pumping iron. Now we're talking about NBC sports coverage. Yes. How do you think the public is going to receive bodybuilding? Because, wow. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, again, even even back when it was like on ESPN and like it was on the mainstream mm -hmm. for, you know, a while. Uh, I personally, when I was younger, I actually enjoyed it. I didn't fully understand what was going on, but I appreciated the way that the bodies looked. I appreciated what it, yeah. what it, what it took to get there. In 2014, how do you think the, the uh, public now would react to watching a bodybuilding show having no knowledge of what mm -hmm. it entails? I think 
most people are not going to take to it as far as saying, wow, I'm going to start watching this or reading about this or following it. And it's kind of sad because if you think about back then, like the 80s was the fitness craze, everybody called it. So that's when bodybuilding started getting big with body shaping. You got Sean Ray, Corey Everson. They were all on ESPN every Saturday morning. And which, when at the time I was 16 years of age, 17 years of age, was a great program to watch mm -hmm. when your hormones are firing <laughs> through the roof at that age. So to see Corey Everson yeah. working out in a skimpy little outfit, not too bad. You see, and there was no horny goat weed back then. That was all natural. There was no into it. It, internet. There was nothing here. <laughs> yeah. it, was all, it was all imagination. Really. Yeah. So when you start looking at things like that, where it kind of spurned it on, I don't think we're going to see a repeat of that. Mm. Obvious because of the sizes, the competitors, it's not some kind of, it's not an appealing, it's not an attainable physique. But you, it is going to make the bodybuilding community, I think, flock to NBC Sports Network, which showed the uh, Stanley Cup Finals this past year. So it's not like it's just some network that shows leftover stuff. No, they showed the cup. It's yeah. a huge, you know, it's No, this is 100% legitimate. I mean, this Definitely. is like full coverage and everything. Now, this is, this is my personal opinion. You know, you have, you have a couple of new, new divisions out there, okay? Namely, yes. men's physique, mm -hmm. which, which will be in the Olympia. And, of course, the Bikini Olympia, which has been around for a couple of years now. Yes. I think personally that I 100% I agree with you when it comes to the bodybuilding side. I think that people won't, you know, understand it. They won't like, mm -hmm. you know, agree with what's going on for whatever reason, because it's, it's very interesting. I think that the public appreciates the way that these bodybuilders look. I think they might be a little intimidated, yeah. you know, but I do think that that's something that they appreciate. You know, it is the perfection of the human form. When it comes to men's physique, you're talking about a look that actually is attainable. You know, you're talking about how 100%. like these bodybuilders aren't. Yeah. I think the men's physique look, you know, really entails what it takes to train hard in the gym and diet to a certain point. I think the bikini look, you know, especially recently, it's, it's, it's actually transformed into a tight ab division. You know, you mm -hmm. have to have some level of muscle tone. Sure. How do you think the public is going to react to that? Obviously, a lot probably better than the bodybuilding uh, side of it. I'm curious now, NBC Sports Network is showing two 90-minute segments, one on October 16th, I believe at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, and the other on October 18th. Photographic at memory. 5.30 p.m. Eastern. There's no, there's no, there's no teleprompters. I might, I might be wrong on that, but I know <laughs> there's two 90-minute specials. It's gonna be kind of like best of or whatever, how they, sure. they're gonna just do kind of a, a medley of what's going on. I'm curious to see do they go for the freak show aspect and show yeah. the female bodybuilding and the men's bodybuilding and even female physique, women's physique to the average person in the street would say, ooh, where well, I think they're, you know, knock, you know knockouts, they're sure. gorgeous. And I, I, I do hope that they show a good amount of male physique and bikini because like you said, that's definitely gonna be more mainstream. Sure. Something that the average guy or gal in the street will be able to look at and say, well, maybe let me check this out a little more. Sure. So I'm hoping that they don't try to go for the shock freak factor. Right. And go, obviously, they're going. that's the highlight of the night is Phil or whoever wins that, sure. that Sandow. But don't ruin it by just showing that. Give these other divisions a little bit of a play. Give them some attention because that's where your market is, really, I think. Absolutely. I think that the average person out there will watch it for that and maybe turn off once they show the other ones. Mm. I hope they give them all a chance, but don't cheat in the, these newer divisions, which definitely the demo was much larger for them. Well, speaking of Dana Lynn Bailey, you know, I think that she's actually managed to penetrate, you know, the mainstream market. I mean, yes. uh, she's out there, like, selling clothes and, you know, just, just talking with people, and I think that that's one aspect that has been neglected in the past uh mm -hmm. you know you have to be personable you have to be able to talk to your fans that's that's another way to bring in the general public like to actually have conversations with them which is why i'm a huge fan of a good friend of mine juan diesel morel who's coming mm -hmm. up soon like he takes the time to talk to his fans he he talks about what he does he talks about why he trains that way i think i think that once you get some understanding with what bodybuilding is and why you why you physique train. I mean, obviously you you go to the gym, correct? Yeah. Right. I mean, and so you know you you go because it feels good. I mean, you know, feels good, and also there happens to be a cool benefit of getting a you know a physical result. But I mean, and it's a great thing to do. Anyone who hasn't done it, I mean, why why are you watching this? You should be out there training. But <laughs> you know, it's it's it really does you know hype you up for the rest of the day. So I think that watching this like extreme version of it to see where you can take the human body. The reason why it's not attainable to be a freakish bodybuilder is because that's not your job. If mm -hmm. it was your job to be a 250 pound muscle God, yeah. you might get very close. You might even be able to achieve it. But you know, we're, we're, we're talking about guys like, you know, this is, this is their job. Okay. Mm -hmm. So NBC sports must've said to themselves, there's something in here 
that taps into the mainstream. Let's like try it out because someone at NBC Sports had the right idea to do this. And I think yeah. it's a wonderful idea. So I guess I'm trying to reason out. Why do you think that they managed to like take that, you know, huge leap and put it mm -hmm. back on, the, you know, the mainstream broadcast? I don't know. I mean, you can speculate a few different things. I mean, the last time I remember any bodybuilding being on network TV was a couple of years ago on ESPN Sports Nation, which is kind of more of a lighthearted kind of, no, it's not a 100% serious type of show. They joke around, have a little fun with sports. What did they do and there? They had on Kai, Phil, uh, I think uh, uh, Yamagishi was on. They had about three or four pros on. Mm. And obviously they were just telling them just to, you know, do most muscular and make the faces. And, you know, they interviewed them. But kind of like, like clowns, like, you know. In a way. Mm. But it was cool just because there was some kind of exposure yeah. on ESPN, you know. But, so I'm hoping that that's not a uh, vision of what's to come yeah. for this thing. Okay, imagine, imagine a person who is not exposed to baseball, okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the way that you introduce baseball to the general public is that you get a guy like Derek Jeter dressed in his full Yankee outfit, bringing in his baseball bat and his glove. And the way that he's interviewed is, oh, hey, why don't you swing the bat a couple of times? Why don't you like uh, spit on the ground? Because, you know, they're like, like picking all these things they're like, oh, why don't you like, rub, Maybe. you know, why don't you rub the ball and throw it? Why don't you show us a knuckleball? And making it a novelty as opposed to asking the real question. Like, why did you get started in this? Like, what motivated you? What's your background? Mm -hmm. Kai Green has an incredible background. If you yeah. look where he came from and where he ended up, I mean, this guy has overcome so many obstacles in his life mm -hmm. for him to be on stage. One of the best in the world right now. That's it. Totally goes against any anyone's ex expectations. If you look at where he started, I think that that has to be tapped into. Also, even a guy like Phil Heath. I mean, you know, people call him the gift. He calls himself the gift. <laughs> he's not exactly giving gifts. I mean, this guy he beats himself up to yeah. get to where he's at. Like there are very interesting stories. And again, I think maybe hopefully I'm I'm hoping that that's the angle that NBC Sports is gonna you know come at it at kind of like this like true life uh kind of like Hollywood thing where you know they actually follow like yeah. one or two bodybuilders I think Generation Iron started with that yeah but yeah. not you know I don't I don't want to see a Kai versus Phil thing I want to you know I want to see like profiles done I want to see a profile on yeah. Kai a profile on Phil and if I'm giving any of you great ideas you know contact me or Joe will help you out <laughs> but, but the thing with the Kai versus Phil and Generation Iron mm -hmm. I think what they were trying to do was capture that Arnold, Lou. Type oh, absolutely. Of thing. 100%. Obviously, Kai and Lou both in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, there were similarities there. Yeah. Where Phil was kind of more of the ritzy guy, right. and Arnold on the uh, West Coast, a little more money, a little more right. flashy, whatever. Right. So I think that's where that was. Now, what I'm hoping is because they have, a, um, you know, they have a, practically a month to cut this NBC Sports program and put this thing together, that they do it the right way. And by that, I mean you can have Phil talking. But then all of a sudden you could show video while he's talking of him training, of him posing right. on the, cause they, it's, it's already going to be done the show. That's right. So you don't have to have him posing for the camera no. like sports nation did. Right. You could have him. Okay. Why do you do this? How, what time do you wake up? How, you know, and stuff like that. So people go like, wow, these guys, this is a life commitment. These guys don't just do a couple of things and they look great. They have to do 24 hours a day, including the type of sleep they get, how much, how long, when do they get up, when do they eat, they right. have to the time their meals, measure out grams of yeah. uh, you know protein and stuff. So I'm hoping that they take that angle, but of course, show them training. Let, let, them, let people see how much weight this guy yeah. throws up, how strong he is. Yeah. Let them see him posing, how ripped and great he looks on stage. Did but they, don't make that the show, though. Let me ask you a question. Did they ever come up with a, a reality bodybuilding show? I'm not talking about just bodybuilders who want to be bodybuilders. Like, you know, we've seen that on MTV in the past. Like, oh, I want to be a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. This guy's like, you know, making a fool of himself and totally bastardizing any like, you know, version of what reality is in terms of the gym. Imagine a bodybuilding show where you take, you know, the top pros and yeah. like you kind of make a, a, a real world MTV show. You put them in a house for about a week and you like just 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 see how they interact and see how they live. How do you think that would turn out? It would be pretty wild. <laughs> Pro I, protein would be stolen. Uh, gym yeah. memberships would be stolen. Uh, There'll be a oh lot. Oh, God. I, I think guys like us would enjoy it. I don't oh, know I if everybody it. else would enjoy That's it. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, they, I mean, obviously we've seen where bodybuilding has become so niche, so cult-like that it has a great following. It's a rabid fan base, but that fan base is, is not – the majority so you're, you're hoping small things like this nbc sports That's network right. things like gear tv of course also of course. bring That's it out there a little this. bring it out to the mainstream let let the average person see this and say and see wow these guys aren't crazy 
They're just regular dudes. Like you said, it's their job. Absolutely. They have great genetics. They have a great gift. And now they're able to do these things and they're making a living out of it. Right. So there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Six weeks, the Mr. Olympia competition 2014. Coming up, we have a couple of great athlete segments with Gear TV's own Jason Poston, Carolina Silva, and of course, Bikini Pro Lindsey Waters. And a special segment with IFBB Pro Juan Diesel Morel, who will be in studio. Coming Steve back Rowe. right after this, I'm Jeff the Producer. He's Joe Pietaro. Be back in a minute. It's not about perfection. It's not about how much weight is lifted or how many miles can be ran. It isn't about the wins or losses or even the competition. At the end of the day, it's about you. How you feel about yourself. It's about making progress. It's about pushing yourself and learning just how far you can take it. It's about setting goals and demolishing them. It's about seeing the limits and knowing you are limitless. It's about never giving up and never giving in. Do you have what it takes? back to gear tv i'm jeff the producer here with the inaugural episode of gear tv online as you can see i'm no longer with my co-host because uh, he fell asleep a little bit but we're giving him some grape flavored e-shock that's right five hour energy and uh, i'm actually in love with e-shock i've been taking it for the past two weeks and uh you guys definitely got to check it out vitaminshop.com will ship all over the place no matter where you're from right now it's time for gears first athlete segment that's right where the athletes give us weekly updates into what they're doing and what they have been doing what they're doing for the rest of the year and whatever else they want to talk about let's start off first with ifbb pro men's physique competitor jason poston down in dallas texas jason how's it going and it looks like he's holding up a magazine of some sort Oh, you know, just reading my uh, Fitness RX mag here, latest edition. Uh, they did a little article on my recent New York Pro win back in May. And uh, so it was just released in the September article. It's always cool to see something like that, you know, being highlighted with, with one of your accomplishments. And I'm still kind of riding that wave. You know, we're, we're here uh, weeks out, you know, a couple months out from the Olympia. And this is really when I'm getting in tune. I mean, I'm in my little post and cave, my little back cave, just focusing so much on preparation and focusing so much on doing everything right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm studying a lot of the shows, studying a lot of my posing. I'm posing every single day, you know, trying to, to just refine that perfect uh, routine and the perfect uh, stance and the perfect look, everything that I need to do in order to, to have that look they want to be uh, the Mr. Olympia champion this year for men's physique. So um, this week, training-wise, I really it couldn't get any better. You know, if I can uh, whine a little bit, which I hate whining, but, you know, I've had a little bit of tendonitis, but I've had such awesome workouts this week uh, being pumped and, and pushed from the pre-shock. It took me a while to really get used to – how intense the stuff was because I'm very stem sensitive, but I start off with half a scoop and I'm up to a full scoop uh, before my workouts now. Midday, uh, my body's really enjoying my 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock workouts and one scoop of the Gear Nutra pre-shock before I'm like insane. I feel like you know I'm uh, going 100 miles an hour. I'm doing like one to two extra exercises, probably four to eight extra sets spend a little bit more time in the gym where normally I'm, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and out. I'm going like, a, you know, an hour to an hour and a half. 
And then um, I have so much energy. My body's so full and uh, my weight is actually up, you know, that I'm doing a little bit of cardio too, not really to burn fat, just because I don't know what to do with all the energy. So the e-shock in the middle of my workouts is, I feel like gives me a whole nother push, uh, not just from you know carbs. I think it was only like five to eight carbs, but it's more or less the extra leucine, the agmatine, sulfate, all, loading all the creatine right now. I've never been a big creatine loader, but right now, Creatine seems to be my friend. It's keeping me so full. I'm sitting at 210 today. Um, when I started my prep at nine weeks out, I was 213, which is the heaviest I've ever been. I've never been this lean at 213 or 210. So, you know, part of me is like, whoa, what the heck's going on? You know, why am I, you know, 210 pounds? But then I'm looking at my abs and, and they're still right on point. So, you know, if anything, looking to be a little bit heavier at the Olympia and, uh, but still have the aesthetic streamline, you know, small waist. Um, right now my belts and my pant size and everything, I'm not a waist measure or size and all that. I don't wear a squeam like all these, you know, people trying to wear corsets, you know, in the, in the physique world. But, um, I noticed that my pants are, are looser than before. And then I'm still trying on my bathing suits. I can actually wear my Olympia bathing suit from last year right now at 210, which doesn't even make sense because I was like 194 at the Olympia last year. So 16 pounds, I can still like, where is it going? I don't know. Uh, so, you know, um, I think it paid off just eating clean all year and not letting myself go. Um, you know, I've never really let myself go, but you know, it, it's, it definitely pays to, to eat clean and to, to put quality nutrients in your body. So speaking of quality nutrients, of course, you know, I'm on my fuel meals whether it's fuel meals or I'm cooking or, um, you know, some of my other sponsors around here, restaurants in Dallas that have been supplying me with really good organic wild game food. Um, man, I'm just enjoying some of the food right now. Uh, I've got my fuel meals right here. They just got a shipment. You can see the box. There's two boxes. I still haven't even packed that yet. And, um, just shout out to fuel meals. I know they're sending, a lot of our Gear Nutra athletes food now. So you guys are such a blessing, man. We we really appreciate you. And then check this out. This is crazy. Um, I just got another two boxes in the mail just now. Here is some healthy brownies, Paleo Bomb brownies from uh, Paleo Bakery and Julian Bakery. Um, they're sending me all this uh, low-carb, gluten-free food that, uh, you know – Really, for my diet, I can eat this during prep. So, I mean, you talk about stress-free. You talk about no worries. Uh, if I can go into Olympia eating brownies and low-carb ice cream and sandwich wraps, um, even cereal, uh, what I mean, they got everything, but it's organic, natural, healthy. These guys are the cutting edge of food. So that's what's up in my world right now. You know, I'm, I'm getting away with more foods. I'm just enjoying the overall prep right now and uh, the one thing if i could just get rid of this tendonitis i haven't been able to work biceps but you know i think i've, I've punished them enough over the last three years uh, that's when i first started working biceps just three years ago so i think i've really put on some size i don't know i mean they're right <laughs> no they're uh you know they're always gonna need work but um i think they'll heal up here pretty quick so um you guys if you're if you want any tips um, on getting lean right now, what I'm doing is, uh, you know, I'm doing some fasting cardio in the morning. I do it for a different reason than you guys should, but I am uh, doing it to control my blood sugar in the mornings. It's been a little bit high, but it's the same benefit for you guys. Glycogen is depleted throughout the night. You know, your liver starts to store glycogen as well. You want to lean out quick, get up in the morning, do some fasted cardio. You know, don't overdo it. Just keep your heart rate you know, at a, at a sweat level, if you're sweating in five minutes, that's what you want. You know, don't need to be too crazy scientific specific here. Go for about 20 minutes on an empty stomach. Get your, your BCAAs from the eShock. You can sip on that during your cardio and then go have your killer, your big old breakfast, you know. So that's my little tip for cardio. And I uh, just want you guys to know uh, so we're here at Gear. We want to provide you with every type of outlet whether it's through supplements, training, advice, tips, Gear Nutri Athletes are here. We got your back. We're here to stay. 
And as you can see, we're blowing up, and uh, we ain't going nowhere. We're going to be here for a while. So you guys need anything, just contact the Gear Nutra athletes. We got your back. Back to you in the studio, Jeff. Thanks a lot, Jason. Now we head over to Miami, Florida, where IFBB Pro Bikini competitor Lindsay Waters is stopping by with her tip of the week. Lindsay, what do you got for us this week in terms of diet and bikini? I know you always come up with some interesting stuff that people can use and add to their food. So uh, what's going on down there in Miami? Hey, guys. It's Lindsay here. Um, just got done with a good shoulder workout. And um, it's time to take my whey protein. And something else that I like to put in that shake is um, a little thing called flax milk. Now, a lot of you are probably used to using almond milk, maybe soy milk. Um, but flax milk is actually, in my opinion, a lot healthier and creamier than almond milk. Almond milk to me is a little watered down, so I like using this stuff. Um, so it is exactly what you think it is. It's flax. Um, and the kind that I have is, has protein in it. So the protein that's in it is pea protein. Sounds disgusting, but I swear to God, it actually doesn't taste bad at all. It tastes really good. Um, it's a plant-based protein and there's no dairy, there's no soy, there's no gluten in it. And, um, it's packed with omega-3s. So... Basically, you always hear about omega-3s and omega-6s. Well, most of us have an overabundance of omega-6. So that comes in um, certain nuts and seeds and oil. So you might be using a lot of olive oil, so you're getting it, it there. But omega-3 is what we actually lack. So it's a great way to get those omega-3s. Um, and it's really low in calorie. If you take a look, it's only about 50 calories per cup. And there is zero sugar in it. There's five grams of protein um, per cup in here. Um, two grams of carbs, 2.5 grams of fat. Uh, there's even some healthy fats in there, some poly fats and mono fats. So um, definitely recommend using this in your shakes. And if you make protein pancakes, putting it in there. And coffee, using this as like your coffee creamer because like I said, it's very creamy. And um, I got mine from... Whole Foods, you can find it there, or I don't know if there's a fresh market around you, but basically those stores have them. Um, it's not even that expensive at all, but I definitely recommend using this over almond milk any day. So this is what I'm about to go have, and back to you guys in New York. Thanks a lot, Lindsay, and uh, it looks pretty interesting. I don't know if I'll be trying it, but then again, I'm not a bikini competitor, because if I was, I wouldn't come in first place i come in last place anyway enough of my stupidity let's go to our final gear athlete segment this week ifbb pro bikini competitor carolina silva who is at the gym right now it looks like and i guess she's going to give us a tip on how bikini competitors train carolina how is it going hey jeff how are you what's up gear tv um i'm here in florida we're here at the gym um I just want to go over a couple of my training methods for this year. Um, I am currently training with Body University, um, Francine Sablon and Jason Tweed. Um, a couple of my uh, training methods this year, philosophy, it's a little different than last year. Um, we've kind of been incorporating a lot of, um, you know, hit style training, a lot of, you um, tap and test style training. And what that is, it's, it's pretty much you know, high intensity regimen in a short amount of time. Um, and it's, it's really, it's best for intervals and it helps boost anaerobic, anaerobic, um, you know, the fitness. So pretty much we're doing a lot in a short amount of time, which, I mean, who doesn't want to get their workout done in less than an hour? Um, very high intensity, super setting. Um, you know, my training split this year is, it looks more, um, you know, I'm training glutes about three times a week. I'm doing shoulders about three times a week also back as well. I'm doing a lot more core this year. We're trying to bring um, a more athletic kind of look this year than, um, you know, just that um, bikini kind of skinny look. Um, you know, we're just trying a lot of different things, um, just experimenting, um, taking our time, just incorporating different methods than, you know, the usual, just lifting weights and cardio. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, a lot of, um, 
what would I say, like a lot of plyometrics, a lot of um, non-weighted things like speed lunges, burpees, um, you know, you name it, like, let, let's go over my training split right now. Um, like, I have for glutes and core, you know, we incorporate a lot of um, Swiss ball lunges, not just, um, you know, the glute machine, a lot of outdoor training, total body workouts, you know, sometimes we'll split it up into upper body, lower body, and we like to mix it up, you know, we're mixing it up every week. We're doing yoga, you know, incorporating a lot of more yoga to try and um, increase the flexibility and um, just different things, uh, mainly the HIIT training for sure um, and the Tabitha style training, which is, if you guys want to look it up, it's phenomenal. Interval training, you get the most out of um, the least amount of time. So if you guys want to look that up, it's very, very, I rec recommend it. And um, I guess back to you, Jeff. Thanks a lot, Carolina. And we'll see you next week along with Jason Poston and Lindsay Waters. I'm Jeff, the producer. That concludes our uh, athlete segment this week on our premiere episode of Gear TV Online. Coming up next, we have IFBB Pro Juan Diesel Morel. And hopefully I'll uh, get my co-host back wherever he went. That would be Joe Piataro, uh, the editor-in-chief of Fitness Rx for Men Online. This is Gear TV. I am Jeff, the producer. See you in just a minute. It's not about perfection. It's not about how much weight is lifted or how many miles can be ran. It isn't about the wins or losses or even the competition. At the end of the day, it's about you. How you feel about yourself. It's about making progress. It's about pushing yourself and learning just how far you can take it. It's about setting goals and demolishing them. It's about seeing the limits and knowing you are limitless. It's about never giving up and never giving in. Do you have what it takes? Welcome to Muscle in the Afternoon on Gear TV. I'm Pete Kacharian. This year is a very special one in the bodybuilding community as we have Joe Weider's 50th anniversary Mr. Olympia Fitness and Performance Weekend, which will be held on September 18th through 21st at the Las Vegas Convention Center in Orleans Arena. And if you haven't heard already, American Media Inc. and NBC Sports Group have partnered to bring back the Mr. Olympia to television for the first time since 1984. A lot has changed since Lee Haney won his first of eight Olympia titles as this year we'll see three-time Mr. O, the gift, Phil Heath, defend his title, going for his fourth win in what Heath calls the War for Four. NBCSN will televise two 90-minute specials of the contest at later dates, with the first being October 18th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and the second on October 25th at 5.30 p.m. This year is also a special one for Gear Nutra, as IFBB pros Juan Morrell, Jason Poston, and Aaron Clark are all confirmed to compete at this year's Olympia. Morrell coming off a win at the Toronto Pro, had a very successful year so far, as he took second place to Steve Kuklo at the Arnold Brazil to finish just short of first place in his hometown of New York to only be knocked off by the massive and freaky Big Rami. A bright future for Morel for sure as he climbs the ladder making his first step on the Olympia stage this year. Gear Nutra's 212 Pro and top contender Aaron Clark also had a great amount of success this year taking third at the Arnold Classic, taking out veterans Jose Raymond and Hidetada Yamagishi, later claiming victory at the New York Pro. Another pro with huge amounts of potential, Clark will be hitting the stage once again with reigning 212 champ Flex Lewis next month in Vegas. Gear Nutra's men's physique pro Jason Poston had a breakout year in 2014 as he competed in four pro shows, three of which he was victorious, only taking second place in Pittsburgh to reigning men's physique Olympian Mark Anthony. Poston later knocked off last year's New York pro champ Sadiq Hazovic right in his hometown at this year's New York pro. Poston will also be representing Gear Nutra at this year's Olympia in its pursuit to become the next men's physique Olympia. Good luck to all three athletes making their Olympia debut. And check out Gear TV's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GearNutra. Then head over to the Instagram page at Gear Nutra Suitical. And of course, visit our website at GearNutra.com. More Gear TV to come with Jeff the Producer right after this.
Welcome back to Gear TV. I'm Jeff, the producer, still here with Joey Piataro, editor in chief of Fitness RX Online for Men. Did I say that right or did I screw that up? Fitness RX for Men Online, but close See, enough. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's still Joey Piataro. At least I got that part right. Uh, this is our first guest segment of the Gear TV show, and uh, I'm actually proud to have him in studio. He's taking time out from his contest prep for the 2014 Mr. Olympia contest. They call him Diesel, his full name, Juan Diesel Morel. Welcome to Gear TV, Juan. Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? I know that you're a little bit depleted now because you're six weeks out from the Olympia? Not depleted at all, just tired. <laughs> all right, good. Um, the main reason why we have you here is because you just recently put out a video that you filmed an entire day of you eating for one of your cheat days, one of your epic cheat days. 20,000 calories. A lot of people didn't believe it, but you documented it from four in the morning until, until like what time at night? Like, like 11 or 12? It's like midnight. Until midnight. Talk about like how you, I, I guess, came up with the idea of filming this, why you, why you filmed it, and how long have you been doing this crazy cheat day? Um, I filmed it because everybody kept asking me. Every time I would post pictures, I've been posting pictures, I think, of my eating since I started in 2007. Anybody who followed me on Facebook, 2007 was MySpace. And, you know, I guess I was really one of the first people who just started posting food pictures. And um, I would just, you know, I just had a food thing. I loved food, so I started posting pictures. I always posted them. People gave me the feedbacks, and I remember even just being an NPC competitor would post a picture, you, it would just end up being like a 200 comment picture because everybody would ch chime in and it would just, you know, conversating, like, oh my God, I hate you, blah, 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 blah whatever. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so let me like ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. When you say a food picture, we're not talking about dry chicken and rice. You're like posting pictures of junk. What? <laughs> right, right, junk food. Give us, give us an example of like what you're posting. Oh, uh, lasagnas, pizza. I'm a big pizza hut guy. It could be whatever kind of pizza I was eating. Um, wings, honey barbecue wings, blue cheese, uh, a lot of um, Spanish food, mango and eggs, you know, um, just a lot of tons of ice. I'm a big ice cream guy, tons of cookies. Um, so it would just be stuff like that. And, you know, um, people knew me. Like, you know, now I guess it's getting more... You know, a lot, a lot more people are starting to, like, take notice of how I eat, but people in the industry would know how I eat, especially close friends of mine that would hang out with me and would see me eat. They, couldn't, they just couldn't believe how much I'm eating. They're like, you're three weeks out from the show. How are you eating like this? Then they were like, you know, at first people would get scared because, like, he's three weeks out. He, then they'll see how I'm coming to the show shredded, and then they'll see how, what I'm eating coming into a show. And I'm like, wow. Now, um, so now all my friends are used to it. They don't even, you know... Doesn't even doing even budge, but now everybody's more like now seeing the video and seeing the pictures. They're like, "Oh my God, how do you eat when you cut the cheats out?" When you you know, so it was kind of, you know, I think I should have went into more details explaining things, but I've been doing this my whole life. I'm an actual ectomorph. I was a skinny kid. I ate bad my whole life, so me eating clean is actually new to my body. I was a kid growing up eating ice cream and pizza all day long on top of the Spanish food that my parents cooked. And I was uh, walking around three to five percent body fat year round. Um, then got into bodybuilding, and I remember when I did my first show, um, 2007, which was I did a four week prep, and if you call it prep, or whatever, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, qualified for nationals my first show, and um, I remember after the show's over and everybody's eating and everybody's eating, you know. I, um, me, John, we, John uh, Delarosa, yeah, you talk about. And it was like my friend Amanda. We all did finish doing the same show, and we all met like three weeks later, and everybody gained like 40, 50 pounds. And I'm eating my, I'm eating like a horse. I'm eating everything in sight, and I'm still shredded. It looks like I just competed yesterday. And he was like, "How's he?" Eating? The only thing was I was shredded, but I was full. So everybody's like, yeah. I remember John was saying like, "How does he still look like that?" I was like, you know, I was like, I don't know. I thought this was normal. I, had, I don't know. I didn't. I just started body, but so to me, that was like, don't you eat? Just get bigger. As long as you're working. My whole thing was, if you eat, you can eat whatever you want as long as you're working out. Right. Because that was a saying that my family said, or if you hear heard people say, oh, he works out. You can eat whatever you want. So as long as I train, I can eat whatever I want. So you look good all the time. And then I started noticing that my body was different, being around other athletes and stuff like that, and you know. So you've been doing it since since 2007. Basically, that kind of in, dieting in, in, in terms of the bodybuilding in aspect bodybuilding, I'm talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. I would, okay. Yeah. And I used, to, I used to do two cheat days instead of one. I tell you, Juan, there's one part in that 20,000 calorie video. It's 
there's a few parts that you know I actually was like laughing watching. Like I couldn't believe what I was seeing, and I believe it was the part when you you're doing a lot of banging down ice cream, but then you say, look, I still got abs, and you pull your shirt up. I could definitely understand where you, the other guys are like, I hate you, man, you know? Yeah, because most of the time people blur, they, like I was, you see them even in front of you and their stomach would just turn into water, like it would just move out right in front of them. Right away, seen, yeah. you know? And I'm like, whoa, that's so weird. Like I can eat like that all, you know, you see me days after the, I would eat like that, and I look oh, yeah. really dry, we're doing videos, and mm -hmm. you know, like it, it takes me, before I, I get water, it'll take me about a whole week of eating like that. You know, and it was just yeah. something that I wasn't like, I was like, wow, it was like weird to see people like right from before my eyes, just see them smooth out, just eating a piece of ice cream or cake. I was like, that's, that's weird. The really funny thing about that part of the video that you brought up, Joey, I think that that was after you ate the five guys meal and you stood outside, you kind of stretch your arms out. You're like, ah, now when you started the video for breakfast, what was the first meal? Describe it and also talk about how you weren't satisfied and what you did right after that. Cause I thought that, that was my favorite part. Like it the very was, beginning. um, Oreos, chocolate, ice cream, and I add, you know, um, Oreos, and then I add fudge. Right. So and you and you and you crumple up all the Oreos to make sure it's nice and condensed, and then you put the fudge on top. You mix it up. I mean, this is breakfast. This is a, you, you set your alarm to get up at four o'clock. I don't to set do it this. up. No, I just wake up. You what? Your body I, wakes up. I wake up. I want to eat, and I, you know, like that. Like I said, was such a tapered down cheat day. Like most of my and, and I kind of I went on on um, calorieking.com, and I was like, let me. Check how many calories I could actually consume. I actually consumed 26,000 calories that day. Ah, 26,000. Without even trying. 26,000 without trying. And this is like a tapered down day. Like, remember what he's saying. We have to get like, you know, an actual day where you're, you know, pushing you're doing it. more. But yeah, when I'm, I mean, I mean, this is not, even, not even pushing, pushing it, so. it. When I'm just eating the way I want to eat, you know, and not having to go anywhere. Because the thing was, I was, I was moving around. So I didn't want to be able to not be able to move. If I, right. I, I, at any time you saw me doing that video, you, you didn't see me like, oh, I'm too stuffed. I was <laughs> never. never stuffed. No. Because I didn't overeat to the point that I couldn't move. I didn't want to, and that's how I normally would eat on a Sunday, which is eat, like I say, if I went to pizza, I normally would eat two pies. <laughs> right. You know, if you look at my pictures on, on, on whatever, I would eat two pies and yeah. then I'll go get the ice cream. So, so let me ask you a question about that first thing. So, you know, you basically scoop out, you know, this huge serving, you know, huge serving of ice cream for any normal person, okay? And then you took, you know, again, a huge serving of Oreos, and then you put, you know, the fudge. Now, after you ate that, you said, I'm not done yet. And you went for a second serving. I and went for the rest of the tub. You, so, so you just killed the whole court? Yeah. Well, like, well, that's like normal. Just, like, I would do that. Yeah. I normally would go through, you know, you saw there I ate about three. No, it's, it's a quart and a half, actually. A quart and a half, okay. I normally eat about a gallon a day. Because I go wow. through two of those quarts. Like an, I do an Oreo. I'll have, like, another flavor, which I'll, I'll do. And then I do my pralines and cream. Right. So I normally, you know, do that. And sometimes even while doing that, I might, you know, because I... I'm like, hey, while we in Pizza Hut, I might, you know, like I said, most of the time I'll have, I'll buy all my stuff, like, you know how I had the Oreos? I buy them a few days ahead. So let's say after the Pizza Hut, I will, or Five Guys, I will go so, to, hey, we might see haagen I haven't had haagen in a while, let's, let's get that. So I'll add that to the, to the ice cream that I'm already eating at home, which is not, nothing is, nothing, especially when I'm just going to be home and watching TVs, because sometimes me and my wife, we um, watch movies, sure. nothing escapes, like the whole, Cabin will be full by the end of that night. Everything's gone. <laughs> Nothing escapes. <laughs> Nothing escapes. Juan, I have a stupid, but I believe it's a valid question here. How many bathrooms are in your house? Right now, there's two. Okay. <laughs> With all of this twenty thousand calories, I'm sure you. you how many times a day? I think are you like in a normal there? person. Yeah, like a normal wow. person. That's more impressive. We than want a number. We want a number. <laughs> no, but that, that that you know no no the funny Joe because that was that was one of the questions on on uh, YouTube. If you if you go to the YouTube channel YouTube.com/slash Gear Nutri, you will see that some of the comments were well. How many times does this guy actually use the, the like facility? Like a normal person. Yeah, it's, it's um my body uses it, digests it as well, and I go yeah. to you know like. You know, normal person, normal person, I would say we go twice a day. And yeah, normal. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So, so, so that basically finishes off the, you know, meal, meal number one. Okay. Now, now after that, I thought I saw you mix up some eggs. Yeah, I did. So I had, how many, how many eggs did you have and what did you have with it? Um, if I'm trying to think, about, I think I had about rough. four yeah. whole and four whites. And then I had bagel with P2A peanut butter, which I have every day. Right. Um, um, a raisin bagel, a real raisin bagel. Yeah. No, no healthy bagel. You a went out. Right. Bagel. A real raisin <laughs> bagel. Yep, yep. And um, and uh, had um, honey bunches of oats. Right. I one of my my favorite series, Captain Crunch, but honey bunches <laughs> of oats is like right now what I'm 
I just got a kick for it. You're, 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 you're craving that particular yeah, one right exactly. now. Exactly. Okay, so like after that, like you, at what point in the video did you did you train? Was it right after that, or did you have? About an hour after that. <laughs> okay, so now you have these two gigantic meals in you. Okay, how long um, after that second meal did you did you train? Did you wait, you, you know, you said like an hour. You said. Yeah, I was in the gym about. How an hour. did you feel when you were training? Did you feel fine? I felt fine. Joey, think about it. Okay, the ice cream he kills off. He has the eggs. He has the egg whites. He has cereal, honey bunches of oats specifically. A real raisin bagel on top of everything else he said, the P28, you know, like peanut butter and everything. Would you be able to train an hour after that? I would be in the bathroom for a half hour <laughs> and the couch for about two hours. I would, I would be on the couch. <laughs> I, would, I would be passed out cold because I would, I would be in shock. I mean, I actually tried. You know, you know, after you see that video, you know, you feel like, okay, well, challenge. I, well, if, you know, if Juan could do it, I could do it. I got through half. No, I got through half of the buyers. I went right to sleep. Because, because, you know, again, when, when that's the first thing you put into your body, like everything shoots up, you just, you want to you collapse. Sure, you got that sugar rush and then it, boom, done. Yeah. So, so you don't feel lethargic. You feel fine after you have like I that have very... To, in order for me, okay, to get lethargic, I have to eat way more than, because there's some Saturday nights, like, we were, you know, Saturday nights, meaning like, I, it's Sunday morning, two, three o'clock in the morning, where <laughs> I go to sleep on Saturday and I wake up and I'm like, outside, like, all right, you know, you have, I'm, I'm like, I'm just... I know it's my cheat day, so I try to sleep as much as possible and then wake up whenever I can. So I'm like, um, sometimes I just can't wait. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to eat. And I normally like, that's what I say, it's a taper down. I would normally eat, the whole meal might take me six, a whole hour. I'll start and I'll eat everything in sight for a whole hour and then I'll stop. And I'll do that for a whole hour, let's say from three to four o'clock in the morning, ah. go back to sleep, wake up, eat the normal breakfast. And I'm like fine like you know like you know you'll be lethargic because i'll be fine i eat my breakfast i'm ready to train nothing wrong with me no bloatness no like i seriously feel like when i'm in especially contest prep and i'm like getting closer to a show my metabolism is so revved up at the at the point that it's amazing how much i can be able to put away and still function correctly because i know hmm. i know like at times when i'm off season and i'm my metabolism is not as fast because you know, I'm not as active. I'll eat some of, and I'm ready to go to sleep, like you said, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, but now it's like, I'll eat that stuff and it just digests it so quick. That's, it's simply like, I really think it's amazing the amount of food I can put down right now. It is quite amazing. But as Jeff said, you're, as we sit here today, you're six weeks out from the O. When do you cut out this Sunday cheat day? I never cut it out. I just taper them down. <laughs> you saw it two weeks before. Oh, yeah. I, I still have them just to taper down. Like I was having... Like instead of having a whole bunch of courts, I'll have like one court for that day. And actually, no, that day I even text you, I even ate cereal. Like, oh, that's right. I end up like, I like, I end up like, because we were putting this video together and I end up like, oh, well, I think no, I sent you a video. You, you I was did. Like, yeah, I, 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 like I ate a whole box of cereal before going to bed and some ice cream and stuff like that. So I was like, hey, yeah, but add this to the video. You know, I just finished off. So whatever. But um, it's just a taper down version. So let's say if I'm doing, like I got that day I did 26, I would say, I can honestly sit here on camera and say that on a real cheat day, like I've been doing this past Sunday, just past a Sunday after that and the Sunday, I can honestly say right now and not be putting my foot in my mouth is I'm, I'm really doing maybe 40,000. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, that, that, that to me was a taper down, you know, even friends of mine that, that that's, even Jill commented on, on one of the things, like I seen you eat more than that at one sitting. I, <laughs> I actually saw that comment on Facebook, yeah, it's pretty funny. like, that's nothing. <laughs> it's like people who've seen it, you know, and they're like, yeah. ah, that's not that bad. 40,000 calories. I, I, will, I will add another 14,000 calories to what right. I did on that day of other real foods and just more junk and stuff like that. But, um, wow. you know, I, I, I didn't have that day. The, 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 like besides the Oreos, I don't know if you, you remember the chocolate chunk cookies that I eat. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You, well, 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 these are very special cookies that, you know, that you get from a, from a, from a specific place. Specific store. And if they don't have it, that's and, it. And, and, and Oreos, that whole pack is about 2,000 calories. Mm -hmm. These cookies <laughs> are double that. So they'll that's be right. like just 4,000 hours. <laughs> and I eat the whole, the whole thing that, that day as well. So, I mean, there's just so many other foods that I will eat and eat, like I said, I'll just be like <laughs> sleeping. Like I'll be eating and sleeping. I wake up and I eat and sleep. And um, so let me ask you another question. So you're 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 like you're like doing these like cheat meals and everything else like that. And uh, you know you've you've done this for years and everything. And you know you hit the forty the forty thousand calorie mark, which we we definitely got to see. Okay, but have you um, have you ever checked your blood work to see Constantly. what it's doing to you? Mm, my cholesterol. My, I mean, I believe you know. I, I don't. I, I believe I have showed it to you before. I'm not sure if it. Will, 
But you actually have. I'm just asking my, because I noticed people out there who have that question. My, my um, good cholesterol was high. My low cholesterol, my bad cholesterol was low, which, which is, is where perfect, it should be. The way right. you want it to be. Um, my blood work is always on point. You know, I never had any problems with anything. You know, so it's my doctor. always says I'm very healthy, and you know, he knows how I eat, and he sees how big I am. He's like, wow, my heart is in excellent condition. I got my heart checked not too long ago, and for a bodybuilder, and for a normal person, is, is awesome. But the doctor said, I've never seen a bodybuilder who has no leak involved. He said, almost every bodybuilder, well, he said, every bodybuilder that he has had in his office has leak involved because of the heavy <laughs> training. Like, you'll get like little vials. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, you know, I have none, none. And I lift heavy, and I lift, you know, I got a, what you call people call a crazy style of training. And you would think, I'm, I would think, well, that's normal. I, I would say, hey, you know, I'm going to have that too. I had none. My heart was in excellent, excellent condition. You know what? The proof is in the pudding. Because if you can eat like that and train the way you do, you obviously you get a clean bill of health when you get all the blood work checked. You look fantastic. You're definitely, you know, you're definitely a threat. Come Vegas, we're gonna, you know, see some good things of you coming there. So it doesn't work for everybody, but it works for you. So you know what? It, you know, yeah, our bodies, I, and it's something that I've learned to over the years. Just you know, I've helped people get ready for shows. And I love nutrition, so I read up a lot of nutrition. Um, um, Why bother? <laughs> you know, but I, I just, but I like to, I like, I like to know, you know, like I like to understand, you know, when I got into this, I got, you know, I got certified. I, you know, I don't want to, I can't have you, you know, I, I was a personal trainer for many years. Yeah, yeah. I can't help, hey, you know, you, I eat ice cream all day and do this and do that. Of course. I can't, yeah. So I, I have to help you so many people. So I always adjust that everybody's diet is different. And notice that all our bodies are so different. And even just, you know, so just because... 90% of the world body reacts a certain way. Doesn't mean that the other 10% biologically is supposed to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, realistically, it's not. it's not. It's not true. I mean, look how many people, you know, like myself, like, you know, you have that are always extremely lean and, you know, they never, you know, no matter what they eat, they never get fat or whatever the case is. You know, everybody's body's different. You got people who eat one meal a day and they're over 400 pounds, you know? Right. Everybody's body's different. They respond differently to food. Their body breaks it down differently. And stuff like that. So I'm very, I'm very convinced that my body breaks. I'm very carb tolerant. You know, believe it or not, people, when I eat, if I do decide to do low carbs, I actually don't lose weight. And it becomes hard for me to lose weight. Right. I have, I, when I eat high carbs in my, in, my, in my diet, that's when I actually lose weight. You know, yeah. so it's like, you know, if I try, oh, well, let me try to deplete for a show and, and bring down my carbs to 200 for a week, my weight will stagnate. Well, let me bring it down to 800. You know, I mean, bring it up to 800 because um, whatever, that's when my weight will start dropping like a fly. It's just my body responds better to higher carbs. Yeah, it's interesting. You probably have, yeah, you probably have like a higher basal metabolic rate than like, you know, other normal people. Like where, you know, whereas let's say that I like dropped it down to a certain level. You know, the reason why I would lose weight is because I'm, I'm way below my level. You're, you're like so far above um, that, that like you're actually compensating for that muscle loss. That's why you have to keep it at, eight, you know, at 800. You start depleting too much, your body well, leaches muscle. But it so, breaks down different because like the yeah. protein, I, like I've, I've noticed I grow well on not, as high before, I would yeah. go eight, you know, eight hundred to a thousand grams of protein, and now I've noticed that I grow better on just between three fifty to four hundred grams of protein. To mostly a bodybuilder, like you know, people are like, oh, that's too, that's low, or that's moderate, you know. Um, so your so your macronutrient is, is is way in favor of carbs. It's carbs, and yeah. I react good to fat. So it's like fats I have too, yeah. I eat a lot of whole eggs, stuff. you know, yeah. steak and eggs, you know, rice. So it's um yeah, a lot of fats. A lot of um, peanut butter. Right now, between eggs, peanut butter, and um, I think those are my and macadamia nut oil. I use well, a lot okay. of that. I use that with every meal. Um, you know, but I'm, I get in a lot of fats. Uh, Juan Olympia, let's talk a little bit about that. Obviously, we know that it's a it's a great 50th lineup. Fiftieth anniversary. Fiftieth anniversary, right? Great lineup this year. Uh, obviously, you know. It's, Everybody says that the top three, everybody's kind of saying, okay, Phil, Kai, Dennis. But you're a guy that a lot of people maybe are not mentioning in that same conversation, but I think that's a mistake. Are you going to win this year's Mr. Olympia? I don't know, but I know that you're going to have something to say about that. I think you're going to be in the pose down. I think for you to be there at this, your first time you, you're deciding to go into the O, I think it's a great time for you. You looked fantastic in New York. Oh, thank you. You got you know a couple of victories under your belt with the uh, Arnold overseas and Toronto pro. 
and you're walking into this Olympia in great, you know, space time as far as getting prepped. How do you feel walking into this show? I know we're six weeks out, but just look into the future a little bit. Um, right now, I feel really, 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 really good. Um, I'm sitting at 270 pounds, a very lean 270. Um, I got lines in my glutes, so that means it's good. Um, <laughs> what was your stage weight at, at your most recent show at the Toronto? It was 259. You're 259, and right now you're 270. Yeah. yeah. Not that big of a difference. No, but, uh -huh. but <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think the, your, the stage weight's going to be for the Olympia? Uh, you have no uh, idea? Honestly, I don't know. If, even if I could weigh what I wear at Toronto, it would be yeah. great. Mm -hmm. I overcarved up for Toronto, but I didn't spill. So mm. I really, I, you know, like uh, New York Pro, I was like 255. So right. I could have been around the same way. I just made sure that I really wanted my body to be really full. So it wasn't, I was 259, but like, you know, when you have those crazy cheats and your body just expands, it was just a good full, being a really, really full version of myself, but without the spilling, you know, like I, I, I didn't spill, so it was a good full and dry. So um, even if I weigh the same, I know I will look bigger now because I've put on some good size from, you know, from here to Toronto. So I don't know what I'm going to weigh. I don't care. I'm just going to focus on bringing that crisp condition and just, you know, bringing my best package today. You know, like every, every show I've been improving, I want to make sure that I come to this show and I'm not leaving any open, you know, just closing all the doors. So any chance I have to place as high as I will, you know, I can cover all, every single corner. So, so we're definitely going to see the best Juan Morel that we've ever seen so far. Yes. Good. I'm, gonna, you know, yeah. and I'm then, happy. Like, I'm not like crashing. Like right now, most, sometimes people have to do all these shows. They're burnt out. I have so much energy in the gym. You know, um, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. How's your, how's your training going? Like, do you, do you strength, modify your, energy? Everything's great. Do you, do you modify your training at all? Getting closer to a show, like in terms of weight, vibe, nothing at all. You, you keep it the same. Always the same. Yeah, Joe, I mean, you know, if, if, if you've seen Juan train, I mean, even in videos, I mean, it's, it's a very explosive, heavy, intense, yeah. long workout. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you, but you have two schedules where you train at 10 in the morning, you train at night at some point. Yeah. So that is maintained straight through until contest time. The contest all season, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, I love to train. So it's, for me, is I'm going to do what I love, you know, regardless of all the rules that everybody has about overtraining and doing certain things. I love to be in the gym and train. This is my hobby. Like people like playing basketball. I love to just go to the gym and train. So I'm going to do what I love and it's giving me results. I, obviously, I mean, you wouldn't be 270 pounds if you're overtraining or getting stronger <laughs> every workout if you're overtraining or, right. you know. You said the magic words before. Everybody's, everyone's body is different. Yeah. What works for Jay Cutler doesn't mean it works for you. What works for Joe Blow doesn't mean it's going to work for his brother. And Joe either. Blow's a good bodybuilder. You look at Jay Cutler, right? yeah, uh, you look at Jay Cutler his, his, his prime, <laughs> he's a train for three to five hours. A lot of, you know, I don't know if a lot of people, he just do a lot of volume. He would do, hmm. like he would go and do back, he would do like 30 sets. Hmm. And then he'll come back at night and do more back. Hmm. People didn't, uh, I mean, people do know that who, who his real fans are, that have read his articles or, in the, you know, but at his prime when, you know, when he was, Training against Ronnie Coleman and stuff like that. Jay Cutler was really big mm -hmm. on the volume. Look how big it That's where I've gotten a lot of my training styles. It's been from Jay Cutler, hmm. um, um, Kai Green. All these guys are high volume trainers. I'm yeah. like, this has to be a secret why these guys get so big. Right. And, you know, the, they, you know, the secret is that they put on, they, they train hard. They right. put on, you know, the muscle, it's, to me, this is the way I, I think about growing the body part. You know, it's well, like anything, you want to expand it. Right putting as much blood as possible and getting that, that volume from the, you know, let's say a, 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 a high rep set or a super, or, 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 or a super set, mm -hmm. you're gonna create a, a crazy pump. So the more blood you rush into that muscle, the more it's gonna expand, the more it's gonna expand. And of course the pump goes away after you're training after some point, but you know, you're breaking down that muscle tissue. You know, if you're just training heavy all the time, like I do train heavy, but if, if you just train heavy without chasing that pump, then I don't believe your body's gonna grow to as, you know, to its full extent and get that really nice round and 3D look, you know, so. The interesting thing that you're saying is that your, your philosophy of chasing the pump 
in you know and also with that volume training joe correct me if i'm wrong also but that's like a old school philosophy where you yeah, know you, you get to the gym for as many you know for for as long as it takes like you know it's not so you know you're not wiping yourself out mentally and physically you just you want to feel that blood rush mm -hmm. and and a lot of guys from the 70s arnold included surgeon break comes to mind um i mean these these guys i guess that they had it right and i think that the element that you're adding that i don't i don't remember seeing you know maybe it wasn't documented but you are lifting extremely heavy now for you, it may be moderate, okay? But for the average person and for the average even bodybuilder, like the weights that you're using are significant. They're not as significant. I mean, you know, watching you on back day, you know, I, I could probably hang with you on two sets, but, but, but you're doing deadlifts. At, let's, let's, let's like talk about your back training. At what point do you do your deadlifts? I start with the deadlifts. You start with it, and then you go back to, I think, the bent over row at some point, which is a very similar movement. So you start with deadlifts, now you have to power through all the other movements, and then you come back to the bent over row. What well, you're doing, like four plates, for bent four over reps, yeah. four reps at the end of a workout. And this continues through the Olympia. This continues right up to, guys, listen, I mean, you know, again, if you want to be big, okay, there's, there's a couple things you have to understand. Number one, everyone's a little bit different, like, like Juan's saying, okay? But, you know, volume, lifting heavy, and lifting consistently. I mean, you know, there's no excuse to take time off. And, 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 and I know you're also big on that. Um, that, like, for you, an off day just doesn't exist. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I, I like to trade. When I get off days, I get so bored. And even on Sundays, it was becoming so boring because I always took <laughs> off on Sundays. Right. And recently, I just started training on Sundays because of the travel. And it's, it's been so much more fun. I was like, okay, it might be that I'm in the gym two hours of that day, but it just made my day so much more fun. As of before, it would just be eating and sleeping, eating and sleeping and, you know, basically driving my wife crazy because I'm driving, <laughs> we're going to Five Guys here. Next morning, next time we're going to Pizza Hut. Oh, let's go to a Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> let's do this. So I'm like planning my day around food, but I'm still like, it gets boring. I mean, yeah, you're eating so much, but then you're like, ah, like what are you doing between besides sleep? So it's like, uh, I love to train. And that whole day I was like, oh, well, I need that day of rest. I need that day of rest because our body needs, you know. And now mostly my Saturday is more like a rest day. I'm still going into the gym and doing something, but it's more catastatics, you know. So to me, that's, as I'm not, since I'm not doing weights, it's, it's a rest day. So, but at least I'm doing something. And it's something I just started doing recently. And Kind of like an active rest. Where yeah, like, you know, and like, it's just, I feel better doing something. For me, mentally, it's something that I like to be active or just don't like sitting around doing anything at all, you know. And... I'm not one of those guys that just could be home all day and watching TV, nothing wrong with it. Just not can't do that. You know, I just mm. need to be doing something, whether is going to the, I don't know. Right, you have to, you, well, well, no, 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 you're, you're, you're a very physically active person. So, you know, you could be doing 20 things during the day, taking care of Evans, you know, like driving around, spending time with people, but you, you gotta, gotta get to the point. The only time I get really tired is now, when I start hitting, I guess, the four week mark, I start, Training, sleeping, eating, training, sleeping, eating. So it's, I sleep a lot. Like I say, now, now I get about eight hours of rest. No, I'm lying, nine. So I, I go to sleep at 11 and I wake up at eight. Right. So when I start, now that I get into the four week mark, I wake up, you know, when I go to the gym, after I get back, like I said, I finish training at one from two to, from two to like six o'clock, I'll sleep and then wake up and go back to the gym. So I'm sleeping most of the day when I'm not training. So it's basically training. Basically, my day just looks, if I'm not, if I'm not eating, the only thing you're going to catch me doing is sleeping, eating, and training. They always say, listen to your body, right? You, you, you know your body better than anybody. You know better than your trainer. You know better than the guy writing the column in the magazine on the newsstand. So if your body's telling you you have the energy to go seven days a week, regardless if it's that sad, like you said, it's not a lifting day, it's more of a cardio and stretch out day or whatever. That's fine. And if your body's saying, okay, you need to sleep, you're getting to sleep. Yeah, I listen to, if, I, if I'm tired and I don't feel like going to the gym, I'm not going to go. Yeah, you listen to your yeah, body. I'm not going to go. smart way of doing But if it. I feel like, hey, I have energy and I'm bored and I want to go to the gym, I always think this is when you know you're overtraining. It's when you don't want to go to the gym and train. Mm -hmm. Right. Definitely. You know, if you're like, oh, I don't want to train right now, I'm not in the mood to train, then you're overtraining. And I told myself, if I feel that way, then I'm going to not train. I haven't had that yet, but I am consuming tons of calories right now because I'm still, like I said, I'm still trying to put on a little bit of size before I start tapering down. Um, and, you know, I still feel like really, my body weight's really high right now. Um, so once I start bringing it back down, you know, then I'll probably start going back to a rest day. And like I said, I'm traveling so much right now. So even on those days that I'm traveling, I'm not able to put in those, you know, same work as I'll be able to put in at home. So that's yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 
another like you know like tapering back down because if I'm mm-hmm. used to you know I'm I'm a big believer in kind of not going as crazy when you're traveling because you don't want to get hurt you know if you don't know the weights you don't know the gym so when I'm out traveling let's say go to another gym I'm not going to go as heavy so if I'm normally squatting four or five I'm going to squat 225 right you make sure that you're keeping like just to, just kind of the mental focus of yeah. right 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 of, of, of like being smart when you're on the road right so, you know, speaking of traveling, like this year you had a ton of guest appearances. I think you just came off of the Red Stick Classic uh, yeah. down in Louisiana. And this weekend, um, I believe you have a store appearance. Talk about the store appearance, where you're going to, you know, uh, be and like at what time. It's going to be in a store Queens from 12 to 2 o'clock. And um, I'm going to be there and all the fans, anybody who wants to meet me, I'll be there. And, you know, take as much time as possible to talk to every single fan who comes out. If I have to stay there past 2 o'clock, I will. And I'm um, looking forward to being there this weekend. And um, I'm a pretty sure it's, uh, it's 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 the Vitality Health Mart uh, Mart or something like that. We we will we will, we're gonna put that information on the bottom of the screen right here. We'll make sure that uh, Pete the intern gets that up there. But um, why don't you give out your Instagram and any other uh, ways that people can reach you in case they want to find out more about this and you know just to catch up with what Juan Morel's up to. Um, you could reach. Um, oh, sorry. That's fine. My Instagram is Juan Diesel Morel. My Twitter is Juan Diesel, and my Facebook fan page is Juan Diesel. Now, one thing I want to mention again at the end of the segment is reading the videos, a lot of people, I mean, reading the comments, a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, that it has a lot to do with supplements. It has not. You know, it has not, people. My, what was always a very, a, a person that with a very fast metabolism and, you know, I always ate like that and was always extremely lean. You know, it took, for me, it took eating a lot of, in my beginning stages of bodybuilding, eating a lot of bad foods for me to end up gaining weight. And, you know, if you notice that other bodybuilders, if they try to eat the way I I eat, they get fat. They'll get big, but they'll get fat. I don't get over the single digits body fat ever. So, you know, um, it's called being, it's just different genetics, you know, it's just, Everybody's genetics are different, and some people are naturally leaner than others, no matter how much they eat or what they do. So um, just wanted to put that out there. You know, people educate yourself sometimes before, you know, um, you make you come and make your own conclusions to things, you know, because don't do what I do, you know. Find what works for you. Find your formula, because you might be other people who who might have to eat like me and then others that, might, that can't eat like me, but... Right. You know, I don't do it because I want to. People think, well, you're doing this cheat day. I'm not, it, it looks like I'm, yeah, it's great. You know, sometimes it's fun. But sometimes when you're tired of eating, it could not, it's not so much fun because you're trying to keep full because, you know, you're like, oh, wow, I got to get big. I, I got to um, stay, I, I'm, I'm flattening out and you're closer to a show and you have to eat a certain amount of meals and a certain amount of carbs in order to fill up. It gets a little, it's, oh, and put it in the off season, put it on the sides. It gets really hard. It's not fun. So when you guys think that, well, he's lucky. At the end of the day, I'm not because I have to eat the double amount of food every day. And when you have to experience that and you feel what I feel to the point that I don't want to eat anymore, but I have and I force myself because I want to put on the size, you know, it's not as, as fun as people think it is. Yeah, it's not, you know, like it's not all fun and games, Joe. It's like, you know, he actually is doing this because if you don't, you, you'll, you'll lose muscle. You you'll won't be able size. to train, right? Yeah. And obviously you're making tremendous gains. I mean, every year it looks like you're putting on three, you know, three years worth of muscle. And obviously this is a direct result of how you're training and how you're eating. But, you know, you spoke about supplements. Uh, you got to make sure uh, there is one supplement line, <laughs> GearNutra.com, that definitely is part of I your take, program. I take that before every workout, honestly, and everybody knows that I do especially anybody who sees me in the gym. I love my pre-workout. I, I was just touching base on, you know, being able to eat whatever you want Absolutely. to eat and having the people, basics. you know, because people think that, you know, well, you know, he's taking, you know, this fat burner and this is why he um, is so lean. Well, well, Juan, I mean, come on. When, when you're, when you're, I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I'm saying this, Juan isn't. When you're, when you're behind a keyboard, Joe, it's very easy to anonymously call out people when, 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 you know, you're not hearing the truth. Here we have a pro bodybuilder, a lot of experience. He's winning shows. He's out there. He's willing to tell you, this is what I have to do. This is why I'm doing it. I mean, it's your choice to believe if you want to come, you know, come up with theories. My belief about you is that you are a genetic freak in certain respects. Now, in order for you to be a, a successful bodybuilder, unfortunately or fortunately, 
family, you get to eat tremendous amounts of food. You just said at some points, you know, it, it, it actually becomes, it's, it's, it becomes like a borderline job. 90% of the time I'm not enjoying it. I, don't, I, I, mm. I remember that I said in that video, if anybody watched it, I didn't have an appetite. That's right. I, I was like, one of those days where I really didn't have an appetite, I was like, I could have done without it. I, fans wanted to see how I had, a, you know, my cheat days, they always seen the pictures. I gave the fans what they wanted. You know, and I'm glad for those who enjoyed the video. I've got so many good responses. Thank you so much for the support. You know, and um, I'm giving you guys what you guys want to see. And the next videos that you guys want to see, please let me know. And we'll be putting it together. We have a few things in the works right now. And um, next one is going to be more of a lifestyle video. It's going to show my clean version of eating. At the same time, me going to the gym, training, you know, how I wake up and I, you know, go to the gym and train twice a day and stuff like that. So you guys are going to enjoy more. You guys are going to see a little bit more different things going on instead of just that cheat day. You're going to see what a normal day looks like for me in my life right now. Juan, I want to thank you for coming on. I know you have a busy schedule. Thank you again for taking the time out. And by the way, this is number two. We're not like, uh, you know, this is the second time that Juan came out here because he wanted to get it right. I do appreciate you taking time out to Anytime. do that. Gear TV, I'm Jeff the Producer here with my co-host Joey Pietaro. We'll be right back after these messages. It's not about perfection. It's not about how much weight is lifted or how many miles can be ran. It isn't about the wins or losses or even the competition. At the end of the day, it's about you. How you feel about yourself. It's about making progress. It's about pushing yourself and learning just how far you can take it. It's about setting goals and demolishing them. It's about seeing the limits and knowing you are limitless. It's about never giving up and never giving in. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to Gear TV. I'm Jeff, the producer, this time solo in studio because my co-host Joe Pietaro had to head back to his editor-in-chief duties over at Fitness RX for Men Online because that's a pretty hard position. And uh, it's kind of fascinating that he actually found some time to uh, stop by with us, right, Pete? I mean, it was kind of nice of him, right? Of course, I'm talking to Pete, the intern behind the scenes. You can't see him. Maybe one day on the show you might. You did catch the first episode of Muscle in the Afternoon, hosted by Pete Kacharian, who gave us the insight into the future of three gear athletes who will be gracing the Olympia stage for the first time. And uh, next week, we're going to have some more great guests, of course, some more athlete updates. But before we go, I just, re just want to remind everyone to buy gear products, because why else are we doing this show? We want you to get some, right? So we have our three signature line products, all from the shock series pre-shock e-shock and max shock you got your pre-workout your intro workout and your post-workout all covered if you want more information about any of these three products please go to gearnutra.com and we just came out with our product called sleep to grow which was uh very highly in demand uh, a lot of you guys asked for a supplement that can help you go to sleep at night while simultaneously helping you keep muscle gains this is the product to do it again for more information about this check us out at gearnutra.com just a few thank yous i'd love to thank I'd love to thank because I'm just in love with thanking them. I want to thank Muscular Development, of course, for airing this. NPC News Online, Heyday Footwear for their amazing line of gear, Nutra uh, branded footwear that you can catch at Heyday Footwear. Uh, of course, Fuel Meals, Liquid Sunrays, and uh, everyone else for watching our first episode. Next week, we're going to come back, like I said, with an incredible lineup. You're not going to believe who we have on. I want to thank you for watching this week. Once again, I'm Jeff the Producer. This is Gear TV Online. For Pete the Intern, thanks a lot. Good night.